Well, that was a heck of a lot less stressful than those playoff games. Hello, everybody. It's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it is time for another review of another Oxford United game. It's the second game of the season. It's the first round of the Carabao EFL League Cup. Whatever you want to call it, Oxford were at home to Peterborough United. Both sides no doubt sick of the sight of each other after playing each other in those playoffs only just a few months ago. Oxford just about edged Peterborough in those playoff semi-finals, but it was a bit different today. Oxford ran out relatively comfortable winners all in all and Oxford make it in to round two seems a long time ago that we were thrashed at the same stage last season by Bristol City but Oxford go through to round two as I said and it finished Oxford United two Peterborough United nil and all in all it was a decent game there were periods where it was very good there were periods where it was very flat but we'll go over all of it like I usually do we'll go over the team news I'll do my review of the game and I'll give my final thoughts at the end of the video I will put timestamps down below so please feel free to jump to any point of the video if you wish that's absolutely fine but if you do the very least you can do is hit that like button because that does help me out a heck of a lot and if you do like the content then consider subscribing. I did do a review of the Oxford's fine win over Norwich City, so please do go and check that out. And if you want to relive the glory of last season, I did a very exhaustive three-part review of last season's season. So please go and check out those videos as well. So let's dive into this team news, and there's a lot to talk about for Oxford United because some big changes for the U's. And I kind of expected Des Buckingham to make changes, and it's good to see. It's actually easier for me to name those players that remained from the weekend. Sam Long, Ruben Rodriguez, and Tyler Goodrum are the players that kept their place in the side but they're all in different positions to where they played on Saturday. Rodriguez was actually starting up front uh, which was uh, really really good to see. I wanted to see that. I talked about that on my video at the weekend that we needed to take the workload off Mark Harris. Jordan Thornley and Greg Lee came into defence and Josh McEachran came into midfield and then after that it's a string of new signings. Some of them making their debuts for Oxford United. Some of them did feature a little bit at the weekend. Matt Ingram in goal Goal. Peter Chioso against his old club at right back. Louis Sibley and Idris El Mizuni in midfield. And Matt Phillips starting on the right wing. There is no place for yesterday's new recruit, Dane Scarlett. The striker came in really late last night. Probably a lot of you had already gone to bed, but he signed too late to feature today. On to Peterborough then, and the posh only made three changes from the side that lost 2-0 to Huddersfield on the opening day. It's a change of goalkeeper with Bill Okapic coming in, Abraham Uda and Kean Haynes also come into the side. Look, it's you look at this Peterborough side and it's clear to see that they have lost some key players since that playoff battle that we had back in April. But they still do have Ricky J. Jones up front who has caused Oxford problems in the past. And they do have Kwame Poku on the bench who certainly could make a difference if he gets on. Quite an odd start to the game for Oxford United and it was mistake ridden for the first 10-15 minutes and it nearly cost Oxford and Posh really could have got into the lead early in this one and Oxford trying to play the ball out of the back and you saw it in mid in pre-season where Matt Ingram was just not particularly great at passing the ball out from the back and Oxford just seemed to be a little bit sloppy and a little bit asleep still and a chance presented itself to Collins who chanced his arm really from the edge of the area. Ingram might be dodgy at playing out from the back but certainly is a decent shot stopper. It was a bit ungainly in dealing with this one. He just kind of allowed the ball to hit him but it did enough to keep it out. But Posh generally did look quite lively in the opening 10 minutes. They beat Oxford's press a few times and they did rob Oxford of possession and Greg Lee was the latest to be robbed in possession in a dangerous area and then he brought down his man on the edge of the area so a really good chance for Peterborough here but it was a poor effort from Sparks it looped harmlessly over the bar and whilst Oxford did put a couple of decent moves together Tyler Goodrum looking okay going forward uh, it was Peterborough who continued to kind of chase to create chances, sorry, at the start of this one. Another really slack bit of play from Oxford, and they just gifted a corner away. Wallin got his head on the corner, but it was straight at Ingram again. That was actually the second set piece where Wallin got his head on the ball, but he couldn't score a goal from it. The first one went over the bar. But Oxford can't keep gifting these chances away to Peterborough, and Peterborough just kept coming forward on 15 minutes. The pace of Uda causing problems to Kioso on Oxford's right-hand side. He skipped round the Oxford right 
it back, struck it at goal, and Ingram this time had to make a very good save to push it behind for a corner. But Oxford did start to create chances and look decent in possession themselves. A couple of lively attacks. Uh, Phillips put in a dangerous cross just out of the reach of El Mazzuni, and then Tyler Goodrum with a magnificent effort on the left-hand side, a curling effort from about 25 yards, and Bill Kopic did actually really well to turn it behind for a corner. But then it was Peterborough's turn to make a mistake on 20 minutes, and boy, oh boy, was it a howler. A shocking mistake by the Peterborough goalkeeper. It was just a routine pass back from Sparks, and Bill Kopic was glacially slow to react. And he just seemed to allow Tyler Goodrum to just close him down. And then Tyler Goodrum was easily able to dispossess the keeper with a tackle and tapped it into an empty net. Great pressing by Goodrum. Really bizarre goal to concede from Peterborough. Really sloppy and slack. And Oxford are in the lead. Yes, and Oxford did look pretty dangerous from this point on. And McEachran played a through ball on 25 minutes. It was excellently flicked on by El Mazzuni. And Goodrum was three again in the penalty area, in space. He could have had a shot at goal, but he opted to try and square it for Matt Phillips. And people were able to snuff out the danger. Both sides were actually playing some decent football. It was a, a very entertaining game, actually. Uh, but there were also mistakes ahoy for both sides. And Oxford's latest mistake came on 29 minutes when they give the ball away again in their own half. And it allowed Point Peterborough to just swarm forwards. Udo, who I thought was Posh's best player on the, on the day, had another good strike at goal. And it looked like it was heading in. It was a powerful strike. But Sam Long did brilliantly to get his head on it and turn it behind for a corner. On 41 minutes, Oxford made it 2-0 and Posh were really static at the back again. Rodriguez did well to keep the ball alive and he passed it back to Louis Sibley on the pen in the penalty area, sorry, on the Oxford right-hand side. Sibley drove into the penalty area, squared it across to Matt Phillips, who just arrived at the back post in acres of space. Peterborough defenders just standing like statues and just allowed Matt Phillips to tap it into an empty net. Easy goal for Phillips on his debut, and Oxford a 2-0 up. There was another chance for Sibley, who just got a little toe on a cross, which was easy for Bill Kopic to pick up, and that was it, taking us into half-time, Oxford 2-0 up, and it was a decent half of football, and obviously a great scoreline for the Yellows. Both sides looking good going forward, and both sides have certainly made mistakes at the back, which has made it quite an end-to-end -end encounter. Matt Phillips certainly looks impressive on his debut, a couple of good dribbles, good runs from him, getting Oxford into some dangerous areas, and obviously took his goal very nicely. Goodrum looking lively again on the wing too. Udo and Randall have been Peterborough's best players, and they look lively down the left-hand side, and Peterborough have created chances but have struggled really to get Ricky J Jones into the game and really so far so good for United who have a strong grip on this game will they make it into round two we'll find out for the second half Oxford made a half-time change and Matt Phillips who's getting back to first team fitness came off at half time and it was another new boy another winger Malcolm Aboe who came on to get his first run out for the U's and the mistakes just kept on coming folks and straight away at the start of the second half both sides made nearly made some clangers straight away Ingram presented Peterborough with a chance and then straight up the other end Peterborough getting a tangle themselves with Blea Kopic and Sparks and it actually ended up with the goalkeeper nearly knocking Sparks Spark out. Um, and it all in all, it nearly presented a chance for a Boe, but Peterborough kind of get a, got away with it. And by and large, I would say Peterborough had the better chances in this second half and probably were the better side as Oxford kind of did just meander a little bit more through the second half than they did in the first half. It was Hayes who came into the game a lot more in the second half as well, drifted in on the Peterborough right, got a good shot away, a low shot, and it was actually another fine stop by Matt Ingram. And Peterborough looked a threat on the break as well in the second half. Rodrigo's giving the ball away high up the pitch, though, and it was a fine break by Hayes. Travelled 30 or 40 yards with the ball. For the first time in the game, they were able to get Jones in on goal, really. It was a good over lapping run by Jones to make up the ground again a decent shot Ingram on the stretch making another fine save and in both of those saves as well he didn't spill the ball which could have presented an easy chance for Peterborough 60 minutes on the clock and Oxford made more changes and um, some of the old guard coming on in Brannigan and more no Donker came on as well so he got 30 minutes up front which is good to see but it did feel like the pace of the game was dropping it was a weird one really because it went from slow 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 and all of a sudden 
chances happened at either end in a short space of time. Abue showed a nice bit of skill on 74 minutes. It was an Oxford corner and he got round Udo, drove into the area along the byline, should have really crossed the ball. He opted to shoot and it was an easy save for Bila Kapic to put it behind. And Peterborough were still creating chances to get back into this game, but it didn't feel like a a threatening night. Like, like last year, obviously the stakes were higher, but they certainly did create chances and it was Hayes again at the heart of most of the good things that Peterborough did he got into the area on the right hand side again the chance got worked out to the left hand side where Udo was in space a lot of space should have done a lot better with his shot on goal but it was a really weak effort which went wide but just two minutes later Peterborough carved out another effort Adjiboy this time who came on as a sub fired in a low cross and O'Brien Brady put the chance wide Oxford certainly were not really exerting themselves, but did create some chances towards the end of the game. For the first time in a while, they put a good move together on 84 minutes. It was Brannigan playing a lovely ball down the line, a slick pass through to Sibley. His cross was a bit too strong, but Abue kept it alive on the opposite flank. He got it back to Brannigan in the penalty area. A little bit of a shuffle and a shimmy from Brannigan. He got his shot away, but it was cleared off the line by Fernandez. And then out of nothing... A good ball forward by Peterborough got Malik Mothersill, another substitute. He seemed like he was in behind. He seemed like he was through on goal and he was going to get to the ball ahead of Ingram. But Ingram just got there ahead of Mothersill. I feel Mothersill should have done better there, but Ingram did well. And actually Ingram overall... A bit sloppy passing the ball out, but made some fine saves in this game. Both sides kept pushing for another goal. Uh, there, were, there were chances at the end of the game. Well, half chances, really. It was a half chance for Odonka. But all in all, a pretty comfortable win for Oxford United. I will say that it will probably be dressed up as more of a comfortable win than it maybe was. Because Peterborough certainly had chances and didn't take them. And Oxford were kind of gifted a couple of goals in the first half. But all in all... Oxford of through to round two. And that brings me to my final thoughts. And Peterborough fans, um, I mean, I can't get away from the fact that your side does look a level below than what it looked in the playoffs last season. I know you've lost some key players. I know you've lost the likes of Burroughs, Clark, Harris, etc. Knight at the back. But it does look like you are in a rebuild stage. And it doesn't look like you've quite got the threats that you had last season. Last season, you were such a devastating side to play against Oxford barely got out of those playoffs ahead of you. And obviously you hammered us at London Road last season. But it does feel like you're not quite at that level. And I'll be interested to know, it's only two games in, you can bring more players in. I'll be interested to know your thoughts about what you think is going to be achievable this season with Darren Ferguson. I did think that a couple of the players looked decent tonight. Um, I thought Udo looked really good. And I thought Haynes looked really good as well. Two lively players up front on the wing. So those are two promising players that came out of tonight. But all in all... Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think you, you played okay. And I would say on another day, you, you could have easily scored a couple of goals and, and you should have really scored at least one in this game today. But it, it wasn't to be. I wouldn't say you're going to lose too much sleep about going out of the cup by any means. But um, good luck for the rest of the season. I'm sure you're hoping that you don't play each other again for a while. Wouldn't it be annoying if we got each other in the FA Cup? But as I said, good luck for the rest of the season. And let me know your comments down below. And moving on to Oxford United. And while the, the, the good start to the season continues, it was a solid home performance and a solid win. The enthusiasm and the excitement just clearly wasn't there from the stands. So that affected things a little bit it did feel a bit more like with the changes that were made it felt like more of an EFL trophy game than the League Cup game but Oxford have got a squad to play with this season and Des Buckingham took that opportunity and it was it was actually really refreshing to see that all the sort of players that came in played their part and yeah you have mixed feelings about the League Cup I mean I would actually probably say going into the game a few days before the game, you, your mindset kind of is like, nah, not really too bothered if we win or not. But then of the day of the game, you obviously want to win. But then when Buckingham makes that many changes, you're really keen to see if those new players can gel and whether they can step up. And, and there were some, some teething problems, some poor passes out from the back. I, I really feel Matt Ingram could be a liability in that area. But generally... 
good stuff from is what I saw. I, Matt Ingram did have a good game. He did make some good saves in this game today. I thought Peter Chioso was pretty decent. He had a tricky winger up against him, and I thought all in all he did pretty well. Louis Sibley, I thought, was impressive as well. Moved out onto the left wing later on in the game, but has some nice touches. Got a little bit of a trick about him, um, but just looks like a player that wants to get on the ball and make things happen, as does Idris El Mazzouni. He's got a little bit of touch of class with his little flicks. I just think he's maybe a little bit of a level above Sid Sibley, but Sibley certainly did well and got an assist for the goal as well. Great to see Matt Phillips. He's just got some like easy qualities about him, hasn't he? That he gets on the ball and he he can just he's he's, he's almost walking pace, and all of a sudden he flicks a switch and he's round someone and he's through and he's into space. And that a couple of little good runs he made in the first half and took his got you know did well in the end with his goal as Peter Pro stood like statues. He got on the end of it and tucked it away. And Malcolm Abue, I thought looked decent when he came on in the second half as well. Up to the pace of the game had dipped quite a bit, but he was still able to get on the ball a couple of times look quite lively look quite dangerous and so it's encouraging signs that we've got some minutes into those guys um, and all in all things are looking pretty good aren't they um we brought in Dane Scarlett, uh, who's going to provide Mark Harris with some competition up front, which is excellent. You, you, it was good to see Gatling get a run out, but let's be fair, it's only a matter of time you would imagine before he goes out on loan. And all in all, there's not really too much to dwell on it. It's great to be through to round two in the cup. Who knows, we might get a Premier League side in the second round, or we might get... Um, a decent side where, at home again where we can progress to round three and who knows we might make a little nice little bit of progress but obviously the priority is going to be the league it's a huge game at the week on Friday against Coventry but Oxford didn't I don't think Oxford had to exert themselves too much in this game so certainly not too much energy taken out of the tank as we head into that Coventry game on Friday night what can go wrong against Coventry right the last time we played them it was a pretty close game wasn't it so it will certainly be an interesting test to see how close we are to Coventry now after the last time that we played them. Um, but all in all, um, a comfortable night for Oxford United, a, a night of progress, a night where everything was pretty decent. And Oxford continued its winning run, two games, two 2-0 two wins. Not a bad start to the season. Thanks very much for watching. Leave your comments down below and I'll be back to do a review of that Coventry City game. Thanks once again for watching. And I'll see you soon.